I'm Mark Anthony. I am speaking to the uh, man from therodeoroundup.com, Jason Hetland. How you doing, Jason? Hey, good. How are you, Mark? Not bad. Enjoying the sunshine. Oh, yeah. Well, sunshine for you and snowstorm for me once again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you crashed the website again. You know, you keep You know, it, it happens when good stories come up. <laughs> you know, huge, huge story today. That's probably oh why. God. And there's a so. Yeah, I uh, I'm in the process of fixing the website, moving it to a brand a uh, brand new server. Mary Walker, the darling of the NFR from two years ago. What is up with her? Tell us the story. Well, there's uh there's some talk. It was uh, she put out a, a, a posting on her Facebook page this morning. Thing that's with heavy heart that uh, her her horse um, will not be in rodeo Houston. Uh, Latte is injured, and then she went on to say that uh, not only will he not be in rodeo Houston, but there's a very good chance where nobody will see her and Latte together again. Um, there is some court um, legalities going on. And uh, we'll have to see what happens. But it sounds like Latte is going to auction. And, and um, there is a, a lady that um, is uh, a 10% owner of Latte. And she is suing uh, Mary and, and Byron Walker for her 10%. So. Okay, now obviously we don't know the whole, the whole story of you it. You there? But, but, um, but, but. But they're but but they used to be roommates or uh, riding partners uh, on the arena cir uh, circuit. Am I losing you again? Uh, as far as I know, like I said, every, it, everything's a little sketchy. But um, Sherry uh, retained ten percent, according to Mary, for the mere fact that. Um, it was to make sure that Latte never uh, was taken or sold from Mary. And now uh, the last settlement that, that Sherry gave Mary Walker said, I need $225,000 to have you pay for my 10% of the, the ownership of Latte. And um, Mary wasn't able to do that. It went to court and now latte is on the auction block so we'll have to see what happens wow okay uh and you and you talked with mary down at the american right i did yes yep she was down there and uh latte was not down there either and you know you, you saw something going on in her head and, and like she said on her facebook page she didn't want to bring everybody in there her her private life for personal issues but um you could you could tell something was really bothering her and and i guess today was a day this earlier this morning that it was brought out and i do have a call in to sherry who is the 10 percent owner of latte trying to get her side because i really pride myself on being able to be a good journalist and, and reporting on both sides so as soon as i get something from her if i do I'll, I will definitely do a story on that side as well and see where we go from there. So, yeah, Mary, um, Mary, Mary's a fun girl. Uh, uh, you know, I know you've always enjoyed enjoyed interviewing her. Yeah. Um, the American. Her, oh. her and Brian, her her and Byron are just great people. Obviously, there's something going on, like I said, that people don't know, but it, it'll all come out. And, you know, both sides will have their chance to, to say what happened, and we'll have to go from there and see what happens. All right. The American in Texas. How was that? Man, that was an awesome event. Uh, paired up with the, with the PBR's Dr. Pepper Iron Cowboy 5 event inside AT&T Stadium. What an awesome experience. You can, you, everybody can watch this on TV. But to be able to sit down inside AT&T Stadium and just experience the excitement and the, the legacy that that, that stadium has it is amazing. And it just brings out the excitement of people. Yeah. It was just, you know, it was an awesome weekend and a lot of history was made. All right. 
how did you enjoy it all overall? You know, I, I loved it. I, uh, we drove down from Minnesota and uh, got there at 6 o'clock in the morning on the day of the press conference for the uh, American, which was at uh, 10 o'clock. We had our, our credential picks up, so I literally got about two hours sleep and <laughs> two and a half days from driving, but it was well worth it. You know, it, it's, it's nice uh, to have the contacts that, that the Rodeo Roundup does because – just hanging out, you know, I, I ran into Justin McKee, who is the host of the road to, to the American on RFD, and we got a chance to sit down and talk. And just to see the excitement, not only from the spectators, but from the rodeo athletes themselves about what the American means to the sport of professional rodeo in the future. You know, unless you actually get to sit down and talk to those guys, you think it's cool to watch it on TV, but to see the heartfelt excitement that these athletes have and especially at the end of the day when the winners are crowned and Richie Champion has been riding bareback horses for two years and he's a 1.1 million dollar cowboy in 18 wow. seconds in 19 seconds worth of work <laughs> you know uh, it, yeah well well you know being a first a first time event there's always a lot of uh, uh, glitches and hookups and uh, things like that but it sounds like everybody just kind of went there with that you know this is going to work attitude and they pulled it off you know and and i really got to tip my hat off to the pbr staff because uh rfd tv and randy bernard and and everybody and i don't know if you know this but gretchen kirchman who was my co-host back at the 2012 national finals rodeo is now the PR director for RFD TV. So I got to meet with her and, and everything. So that was kind of nice. But the PBR staff were actually the staff that put on that event. You know, the, the bullfighters, the arena help, the security. So it was a, it was a great deal and a great partnership. And um, like you said, everybody's got some, some things that they got to work out and everything. But for the first year, it was pretty darn flawless and it was just a great great experience was there a a large audience that stayed for the, from the saturday event to the sunday event so or was the sunday event smaller or larger was the american audience size that you saw i mean the the mm -hmm. uh that arena holds eighty thousand people so it's kind of hard to really judge but was the turnout just as well for the american as it was for uh the dr pepper event um, you know, I, I honestly think it would have been. Um, they they are thinking that the, the Iron Cowboy had about 55,000. We think that the um, American had around 40,000. But the thing is, on Sunday when the American was happening, was a big ice and snowstorm, a winter storm going through Oklahoma and Texas. Right. And me being from Minnesota... It's no big deal. It's <laughs> an eighth of an inch of ice, but that state and that area down there shuts down mm, when they wow. even mention it. So they um, actually, Jerry Jones, uh, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys and the guy that built the AT&T Stadium for Sunday, bought 10,000 tickets for um, military veterans. And they, they actually, out in the parking lot, had a huge... Um, a bunch of trailers and a catered meal for them and those buses with those veterans were not able to make it so those oh. were 10,000 tickets that there was nobody in the seats right. because they weren't able to make it so like I said it, barring that snow and ice storm I think it would have been very comparable if not maybe a little bit more cool um, while you mentioned the veterans you are part of the resist all of veterans what is that it's the Wrangler National Patriot Tour and the American 300, or <clears throat> excuse me, organization. It's a great, great organization. It was started, <coughs> excuse me, by uh, Robbie Powers. And um, what that is is throughout the year, the Wrangler National Patriot Tour, who you always see the the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo and Casey Field um, always wearing his is Wrangler National Patriot shirt. What right. that is, is we have um, pro rodeo athletes that go to the Middle East, that go to USO tours, that, that get on a plane and, and do, you know, wealth morale and welfare visits for our deployed 
service members that are protecting our freedoms. And um, that's paired with the American 300 organization where they have anything from Olympic athletes that go. In fact, they just got done doing one in, in Grand Forks, North Dakota um, with a couple athletes. They were in uh, Iceland uh, during the Sochi Games and they had a couple um, retired Olympic athletes in Iceland watching the Olympics with the troops. It's just a, it's a, organ- a couple organizations that give back and say thanks to those that protect and our freedoms and serve our country 365 days a year. All right. Good. Good groups. Now, PBR, the American, was pulled together by Randy Bernard. Mm-hmm. And you and I both know Randy from the PBR, and, you know, and what he did with the PBR is just absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, but, in, but watching your interview with him, He's always a very positive guy, but this 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 American kind of blew him away. Even though, it you know he was in charge of it, you know. You know, it, yeah, it, you you would not realize how nervous that man was <laughs> that weekend. You'd always see him walking around and during the press conference, and he, he does nothing but praise everybody that brought it together. You know, and he was just he's very humble. And he yes. says, I'm just one of the many parts that brought this together. And and, and Patrick, the, the president of RFD TV, said, no, Randy, this was your vision. And this is your baby. I just funded it for you. <laughs> you know, and uh, it was really it was really great because Patrick was presented with a American belt buckle during a TV break. And Patrick says, I don't deserve this and handed it over to Randy and presented it to Randy oh, as a wow. first. So that was it was a pretty special moment, yeah. and you know, like you said, we we both know Randy real well, and uh, he's taken a lot of time out. He's he's had phone calls with me, which I posted on the website with the story, and he sat down with me there, and just just a great guy. He he loves what we do, and his vision going forward. This was a two million dollar rodeo, and if you guys go back on to the Rodeo Roundup and see my interview with Randy from the American, his vision, what he's got in mind for this American in the next 10 years will blow your mind. And I believe it will happen because when you have a 19 time world champion, Trevor Brazil saying that he was not able to sleep the night before the American and he has not done that in years, you know, it was a big, big deal. And, $100,000 $100,000 for first place, $25,000 for second. And then you have a 21-year-old bareback rider that wins $1.1 million. I mean, it was unreal. So is it all set, so is it all set for uh, 2015? Well, that, that's what they say. They haven't officially announced anything yet, but um, it will be far-fetched if, if something doesn't happen. Um, you know, it, there, there's a lot of speculation still about if it's going to be the American or if it's going to partner with something. So I'm even waiting to see what's going to happen. That'll be interesting to, to see with, with everything that's been going on the last few months. Uh, I'm excited to see where it goes. Cool. Um, you, you've basically been drip feeding the website, something new every day. How much more uh, stuff do we have? What are we looking forward to? You know, I've got uh, two more stories from the American. I've got, um, an interview with, uh, Daryl Worley. He's, he's sang the national anthem on, uh, Saturday night. And, uh, um, and he, he actually owns some bulls and, and has gotten into the PBR and stuff like that. So we talked a little bit about that. And then what's really cool is something that you don't get to see very often. Um, uh, me and my team that were down there, uh, became friends with one of the higher ups in the management with the Dallas Cowboys. And he took us on a exclusive behind the scenes backstage tour of the bowels and depths of AT&T stadium. We went in anywhere from, you know, a luxury suite and those suites start at $500,000 a year. They start at $500,000 a year to, to own a suite. We went to the video control room. We went up to the press box, you know, and, um, also in that video, he, 
he emailed me over some documentation, just some facts about AT&T Stadium. So it's all there and for, for your, your listening and reading pleasure. And that stadium is something – I mean, I've been to a lot of stadiums throughout my career. That is next to the impossible for anything to compare it to. So that's a story I have coming up along with Daryl Worley, and then we'll get going on current stuff. And I had to take a break today just because of the Mary Walker story. But um, if something happens like that over the next couple of days, I won't post an American story. I'll post, you know, a, a new That's story, fine. you know, but uh, we'll, we'll go from there. So at least a couple more days and then all the coverage from the two days will be will be locked and loaded onto the rodeo roundup dot com. Cool. What's uh, what's up up next for Jason Hetland? You know, uh, I start my rodeo uh, season here in the next couple weeks and I'm going to try to be doing some stories from some up and comers you know uh, some some names that you may not know but in my mind you know you're going to know Uh, uh, that's what I like doing Uh, there's some times like the Minnesota Horse Expo I have a PRCA rodeo we'll uh, we'll go down there and uh, report on that and I just I'm going to do some stories Uh, another fun fact in in, uh, I'm going to release this exclusively on this right now is I got to sit next to Julie uh, Moreno, Bushwhackers owner. Yeah. Um, down there during the Iron Cowboy because uh, Bushwhacker was bucking, obviously, as a bounty bull. And we were talking and, and getting to know each other a little bit better. And uh, he gave me his phone number and told me to come on down anytime I want to California. And he'll let me stay for a weekend and do an exclusive footage touring the Moreno Ranch. Come on down. Yeah, so so I'm going to have to make that happen at some point. And, you know, he'll he'll take us around in his little uh, his, uh, ATVs, and, and we'll do some, some footage, and that's where Bushwhacker will actually be retired. So it'll be fun to be able to see that, and I, I hope we can make that happen at some point. All right. Jason, I appreciate your time on this. I know, you know, that the Mary Walker thing kind of blew up in front of everyone's face here, and uh, it's nice to have you back online, get, uh, get you back doing some more of uh, uh, videos here. So uh, we're going to wrap it up, and they can find more about you at therodeoroundup.com. Sound good? Fantastic. Thanks for your time, Mark. All right, say hi to your family for us. All right, sure will. Okay, bye. All right, we're good.